All right, Dr. Hunter. So I have a question today. Okay, let's hear it. Um, can we go over sigma and pi bonds and why they're so important in chemistry? Okay, <laughs> we can do that. Um, I've, got, I've got some ideas on that one. All right, so your question was um, sigma and pi bonds. Right, and why they're important. Um, so, uh, sigma, sometimes you'll see with the Greek letter sigma, and sometimes you'll see it written with the Greek letter pi, all right? Um, as a general rule of thumb, a place you can start is that there are a lot of bonds that are single bonds, that are sigma bonds, but it's not absolutely, uh, uh, guaranteed that that'll be the case, but it's it'll certainly give you a, a place to get started. And pi bonds, almost always you'll only ever see them if you see double or triple bonds. So far, so good. Yep. So um, let's look at sigma bonds for a second. Okay. So a sigma bond is the bond that you get when um, you look at two atoms. So here's atom one and atom two. And if you look directly down that bond from one atom to another, uh, a sigma bond, you'll be able to see it will be in this region in here between these two atoms, okay? Um, now, it's how they're formed, we'll talk about in just a second, but as a general rule of thumb, these, these, the orbitals of this atom and the orbitals of this atom overlap such that directly along this bond, those orbitals overlap. So if I were to draw it slightly differently, I'd say here's an atom, here's an atom, and oh, here's its 1s, here's its 1s orbital, here's its 2s orbital, 2s orbital, and they overlap in this area directly along this bond. Okay? And so if we have an atom where the orbitals can overlap like this directly along the bond, we would call that a sigma bond. Um, in my head, I always think of sigma as being kind of like the primary, the main bonds, or the most common ones, and the, the easiest to understand and the easiest to explain. Okay? So far, so good. Okay. In contrast, here's an atom, and here's an atom, and not all the orbitals point along this axis. For instance, this one might have a p orbital. In this case, it kind of looks like the p orbital is above and below it, right? It might be the py or the pz or something like that. And this atom might have a p orbital above and below it. And as I bring these atoms closer together, trying to form a bond, we can have some overlap above and below it. So as I bring these ones closer together, Okay, here's my central, here's my two nuclei, and here is my p orbital, my p orbital, oops, running out of room here, my p orbital, and my p orbital. This overlap, where those orbitals can touch each other, where they, uh, where they can share the same space, that'll, that bond between these two atoms, um, can help hold these together. But the orbital isn't directly down the path between the center of the nuclei. It's kind of over here on the side, over, above or below. And this type of bond is called a pi bond. If, it, if, it, if the bonding takes place not directly between down the, down the axis joining the two atoms together. How'd I do? Okay, so the sigma bond is the straightforward 
like like you said, the most basic overlapping of orbitals. But yeah. then the pi bond is in the, in your example with the p orbitals, and it's not as straightforward. Yeah, um, I think I just thought of an analogy, which I have to say I've never heard before, but maybe people use it all the time. This is more like the atoms doing a handshake, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They reach directly out mm -hmm. towards the other at the atom, and they're bonded directly down between them. Fair enough? Yep. And this one is like a high five, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's a high five or a low five, so to speak, right? Over here, the atoms are making contact, forming some great, great interpersonal relationship with, via the, the high five. Maybe, so maybe we've got fist bump uh, and high five. I don't know. Um, but I think that's, the, that's kind of a way of thinking about where does the bond form. Sigma, bond, sigma bonds are handshakes or fist bumps. Oh yeah, I like this. I'm going to go for this for a long time. I can see that right now. Or, uh, but, and pi bonds are like high fives or low fives or maybe, maybe some other kind of modern greeting that I don't know about, but uh, nonetheless. How, how, does, that, does that work for you like that? Yeah, I, I think that's a fine enough analogy. Whether you agree or if you dislike it or like the analogy, I think it works. Okay. I think my only other question is that you mentioned that pi bonds are more with double and triple bonds. Um, does that mean that double and triple bonds are only pi bonds? No, it, no, it doesn't mean that. In fact, actually, let me, uh, let, before, I, before I deal with that, let me, let me come back to the sigma bonds just a little bit more because um, right now I've made it seem like sigma bonds come from s orbitals and they don't solely come from s orbitals so i'm going to get to a new i'm going to give you a, a, a couple more sigma bond ideas okay so here is my one atom now, now i'm going for the little atoms apparently and so we've talked i mentioned that we could have s orbitals around the outside of those uh of those atoms and they could overlap directly down this path. Well, it's not just s orbitals that point down that that point directly down the handshake down the uh, down the uh, down the fist bump path um, because there are p orbitals, some of which that are we just discussed for the the pi bonding, but there's also p orbitals that are directly down along the orbital along the bond axis and so as these two atoms come together not only can these s orbitals overlap but the p orbitals can or this this particular p orbital that's oriented in the correct way can overlap and so i'm going to draw them a little closer together this time and so i'm going to have an s orbital an s orbital but i'm going to have some serious overlap by my p orbitals. And so this overlap here along those p orbitals, it's a sigma bond because it is directly down the orbital, uh, directly down the bond axis between this first atom and this second atom. And so um, anytime we can arrange orbitals such that they are, they, overlap conveniently directly down between the two atoms, that's a sigma bond. And so there are, the s orbitals can do it, the p or, some p orbitals will do it at times, as, as well as some d orbitals, if they can bond directly down the orbital path, down the, down the bond path. Okay, so what was your question? Because this, this is a different question I answered. What was, remind me what your question was. That, so double and triple bonds are only yeah. made up of pi bonds? Um, no, I don't think so. Because I think, um, I got to think about this for a second. Okay, so I've got an atom and it's triply bonded. So let's say a, a carbon to another carbon with a triple bond and a hydrogen 
and a hydrogen. Okay, so one of these bonds is going to be directly down the axis. So it's going to have a sigma bond. But these other two bonds are bonds that come from uh, um, overlap of p orbitals. And so this triple bond is going to be made up of at least one sigma bond. And I think it's made up of two pi bonds. And, uh, and so, um, because there is, there's going to be something, there's going to be some orbital overlap directly along this axis between the two atoms. And then I'm going to write a little pi and a little pi here. And then there'll be some bonding that's overlap of these, uh, of the p orbitals in this case. And, uh, and so uh, a triple bond um, definitely has some single bond, sigma bond characteristic, and, but also has some pi, bond, pi, pi bonds in it as well. Okay. Is that, so, is, that, is, that, is, is that where you wanted me to head on that one? Yeah. Yeah. So double and triple bonds still also have a, that basic sigma bond yeah. in them. Yeah. 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 And, and I think it's just a way of us trying to understand uh, how various orbitals are used in trying to hold molecules together. Um, and it's, um, and I guess, yes, there will all, I, I, I'm trying to think if there are examples of whether you could have pi bonding without also in a sigma bond. And I can't think of any examples right now um, because you, ha you have to have, uh, there's going to be something that's going to be aligned. It's easier to align directly along the bond axis. And so you're probably always going to have to have some sort of sigma bond, uh, but you can but you can also have additional bonds, the pi bonds that go along with that I've tried to show with the overlapping here. It, it, it's easier to fist bump, but you can also give out high fives if you want. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even 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 yeah, tall people and short people. I'm, I'm sure there's a, a tall short per, and a short person analogy here somewhere, but I can't think of it. Thanks for, thanks for the question. Thank you for answering, Dr. Hunter.